Hello and welcome to Vainglory. This is how. Hello and welcome to How to Vainglory. This is the series where I share a bunch of tips and tricks on how to basically get good and. Yeah, <laughs> that's just about it. I'm in skill tier 5, decent ish gold. Um. The way the skill tiers work, obviously, it goes up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm, I actually don't know how, exactly how high it goes. Each skill tier, I'm decent-ish, um, has bronze, silver, and gold. Once you get past the gold for a certain skill tier, you move into the bronze of the next one. I have 278 wins, and I'm working my way back up for Sinister 7. And third one of the day. Third one of the day. Well, basically first one and third one of the day are very important. If you want to get a lot of glory, it's very important <laughs> to get get three wins a day. That lets you basically get 150 glory guaranteed every day. And the most important way to level up your car, or uh, basically get gloried by characters, is by, um, the yeah, best way to get glory is by leveling up your karma level, which automatically levels up at the end of, at least a little bit at the end of each match. So, the best way to do that is just by playing a lot of matches. It doesn't always matter whether or not you win, you just need to make sure you win at least three matches a day. But just play as often as you can, win or lose. You'll be moving up in karma level, which will eventually make it so you can very quickly level up in well not level up but get glory. Obviously, every match starts off with that loading screen. Um, in this <laughs> the video, I'm playing as Vox. It's always good to buy one tier one item. Which then builds up to a tier 2 item. For example, Weapon Blade moves up, can move up into Heavy Steel, Six Sins, or Piercing Spear. And Piercing Spear builds to Tension Bow or Bone Saw. I use Tension Bow. Okay, I use Tension Bow as my example. Two things build into it. It's best to get those two things before you do get it, unless you have your straight up enough money to buy it. So that's how to eventually build through in the game. Great way. It's always good to have a few tier 2 items before you move into your first tier 3 item. Because tier 3 are obviously much more expensive. At 45 seconds, it kind of passed a little bit ago, obviously. But at 45 seconds, it's when the jungle minions spawn. And when the minions meet up in the lane. It's so basically when everything kind of starts off. In the match is 45 seconds in, so by then you should be either waiting at the camp. At 45 seconds, either waiting at your jungle camp if in the jungle, or up into the lane, waiting for the enemy minions to start off your farm. The best team composition has. Oh god. One person in lane and two in jungle. <laughs> We're not doing that right now, but. Hopefully that's okay. I'm just going kind of regressive. I'm being a little careless because it doesn't really matter. Because <laughs> it's just a dumb little tutorial video. But I'm pretty careful that Celeste has some good harass. Slow him down. Ooh, take some turret shots. Oh, crap. Hey, don't worry about it. Halcyon Potion. So, like I was saying, buy one tier 1 item and a Halcyon Potion to start off. This is normally how, basically the best way to start. Halcyon Potions heal your, um, your health <coughs> and your mana, energy, whatever you want to call it, over time. So very, very useful late game. It doesn't serve, um, it's not quite as useful. But early on, um, health gives you, makes a big difference and it's very helpful. 
Okay. So, as you can see there, I bought a skill tier, uh, a tier 2 item. I haven't uh, opened up my book of eulogies, which gives me life steal whenever I kill an enemy. I haven't upgraded that anymore. I'm going to probably get six sins um, and or maybe a heavy prism af after I buy my weapon blade. So I'm not building into tier three, tier three items until a little bit later. Like uh, the best. Okay, I'm gonna get back up because being a little uh, pushing, pushing a little too hard. I'm overextending. That's what I call juice. <laughs> So in Vanglory, one of the most important things is oh crap, <laughs> Instead of example, is last hitting. So when a minion gets really low, you hit him once, and you get the last hit, which means you get all the gold and experience from that particular minion. Watch a little him one more time, and basically steal it. But that's just what last hitting is. If you don't have minions around, you can go ahead and just free it to death. Minion has full health; you can hit it once or twice, but then. Wait until it's low to hit it to finish it. Finish it off. I have life still, so it's very important for me to get last hits right now. Okay, harass him a little bit with my first ability is Vox. Oh god. Holy crap. Ha, you suck. Whoa! Where did that thing did that thing? Ugh, where did that damage come from? Jeez. So, I'm actually going to buy Barb Needle, Tier 2 of Book of Eulogies. And then, because I'm getting kind of pushed down on hard with uh, some ganks, which is when they come out of the bushes. It's going to start right there. When you're sitting in the bushes, you can't be seen. And then if you come out of the bushes to attack someone, it's called ganking. Since I've been ganked a couple of times, <laughs> I've been a little careless with my sprint boots, which is always nice to get away. So if you're ever getting ganked a lot, or basically just keep dying in general, it's always a good idea to pick up some sprint boots. So sprint boots is one of the most uh, uh, important items to have. Build... What you build and what you buy is pretty much the most important thing in the Glory. But no matter what build you're using, which is basically just what you're buying, no matter what uh, build you're using, sorry, is going to include sprint boots. Oh man, yeah, see, so ganked, trying to overextend for a kill. Overextending when that line right there. Go pat get past it too often. It's basically overextending. I tried to overextend for a kill. Um, I'm doing terrible right now. I don't really care though. Being a little careless because, like I said, don't care. So, like I was saying, boots are very important to pretty much every build. But when to buy them and when to level them up or upgrade them is also very important. So, you're like I said, you're gonna want to get tier one whenever you're getting pushed down, pushed down in the lane, um, get caught overextending too often, or if um, the enemy is consistently invading your jungle, it's also an oh gosh, another good time. Or if you just feel like it's time to buy them, it's also when you should buy them. <laughs> time to start buying them. To level them up to travel boots. Whenever you need the passive speed, sprint, sprint Roots doesn't give you a lot of passive speed, but and the most important thing about it is the passive speed that it gives you, or sorry, the active speed buff you get from it. You basically just use the active buff to get away. Oh, wow, that was not close. So, see, they're getting a little close. If they got too, too much closer, I would have used my sprint boots to get out. They are being very aggressive. Uh, we're being a little uh, overextending, but 
Okay. Try to lost it, that minion. Oh god. Whoa. Well, that would have been a good time to use my sprint boots, but I kind of. But it's the guild. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I keep dying a lot. So that's a good time to give up, to put up the travel boots, or if you're getting a little bit later game, you need some passive speed. The journey boots guarantee you no increase of passive speed. I would not suggest them until you have um, complete completed your full build and truly really just don't have anything left to spend it on. Until that point, you don't really need journey boots. Kind of pointless. Or if you need to, um, some more activation. Need to activate them more often. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, jeez. Almost overextended there, got kind of close, but I was able to uh, get out of there. More exciting is very important because it leaves you basically wide open for ganks. Ooh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Scarf, okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I, I started to try to avoid Scarf's uh, little fire there, forgetting that it's mine. Eh, oh, really? I was not that close to the turret. That's not even okay. Okay, well... He's going along this match. Okay, look. And... Oh, come on. There you go. Last hit. Last hit. Said very important. You can normally stand back, wait, and that's hit. Wow, that... Are, oh, crap. See right there. Sprint boots. Used it. Uh, at this point, it was travel boots, but... Used it. Oh, dang. To get away. I'm going to teleport home. Arden does a crap ton of damage. I don't know why. Um, I'm gonna build heavy prism out of my weapon blade. So now I have four <laughs> tier two items and no tier three. And this is about the time when you would get uh, your first tier three item. Okay, it looks like we're having a team fight down here. When you're low level, you can kind of be on your own. Ooh. Oh, dang. That was good. There you go. Got the kill. Jeez. That's annoying. I'm going to kill the gold mine. So, the gold mine. Let's talk about that. Um, F. After five minutes, oh, wow. After five minutes, it spawns in. Okay. Um. Oh, okay, that was close. Sorry. Um, after four minutes, it spawns in along with the, the two minion mines on the sides. <laughs> Um, minion mines on the sides. The minion mines, I'm going to talk about it in a different video because there's a lot to them. Anyways, gold mine takes four minutes, I believe. No, three minutes to fill up. Pretty sure three minutes. After the three minutes, it gets. Okay. Basically, max potential, slow down. <laughs> Free kill. Okay. I'll take it. Um, after that time, he gives all the gold he has collected to whichever team holds him. If no team has him captured, he'll just hold the 300 gold that he has. His max uh, capacity is 300. Hold the 300 till the team captures him if he's, no, if he's not captured yet. You normally wait until multiple enemies are down to try to capture it because it can be stolen just like minions with last hitting. If you get the last hit, it goes to you. So, like I said, allowing it to be stolen. So you gotta be very careful with that. Oh no! Uh. 
Wow. <laughs> you saw that lag. That wasn't okay. I lagged to death. <laughs> so getting some more tier 2 and tier 1 items. After my first tier 3 item, which I got, which was Serpent's Mask. So, I'm um, upgrading. You have your three abilities on the bottom. Um, they can be upgraded when you level up. Level up your levels are right next to your health bar on level nine. Uh, <laughs> there's so many little things that I just kind of do without thinking. I want to try to mention most of it. So, experienced players play constantly tapping all over the place. They're never just standing around because it leaves you vulnerable to stuns or whatever. Get him. Okay, he's gonna get away. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, see if I can jump in on him. If not, that's okay. So, what he's doing is he's standing behind the... Oh, God. And I'm dead. <laughs> he was standing behind the turret. Uh, okay, there's so many things I need to talk about right now. Okay, whenever you're low health, I'm going to talk about what the glaive is doing. You can hit the button right, um, three away from the shop. It's a little teleport button. Okay. Right next to the learn, which I just tapped. And I'm tapping, you can kind of, should be able to kind of see what I'm tapping. So you, you hit it once. And you do this little, <laughs> this little animation. It takes like three or four seconds, whatever, however long it is. Then you teleport right back onto your base. When at your base, you heal up, and you heal your energy, your mana, and your health. Oh crap, I didn't mean to do that. You can look at the opponent's build by going to the score. You can see their build, their KD, your teammates' KD, kill-death ratio. What that KD stands for. In case you didn't know. Oh, she's going to get caught out. Oh no, I'm going to get caught out. We're going to overextend it. I'm out. <laughs> that box, or sorry, that Koshka, that's right there, was turret diving. Um, whenever you attack an enemy, oh, jeez. He's going to try to turret dive me too. Oh, dang, no. Oh, my gosh, he got away. No. Turret diving, whenever you attack an enemy hero, that is within, and you are within the range of the turret. The turret will stop attacking minions and start going after you. The turret will attack the closest thing to it, unless you're attacking the um, an enemy hero. Then it'll then they'll start attacking you. Like they don't know we're gonna... <sighs> Gee, it's so hard to explain. <clears throat> I can easily show you, but I can't explain it. Ooh, wow, that Arden. Okay. So if I were to be standing here... Ugh, this is so annoying. Let's look, the Koshka might do it. Okay. Try to invoke... Okay, see how they have their minions? It's They're going to attack the minions. But after the minions are destroyed, or if they start attacking me... Okay, I'm not gonna turret dive. So whenever you attack an enemy that is with, and you are within the range of the enemy when you're attacking them, so see I have the minions there attacking the minions because minions are closer. I I attack the Arden. Turret attacks me. Each time the turret hits, it does more damage. If you're the closest thing to it, it'll attack you. But otherwise, it'll attack minions. Or basically whatever's closest. Then I attack enemy hero, and if I'm in within the range, for example, right there, I'm within the range, turret attacks me. So if you go past the turret, kind of ignoring it, try to finish off an enemy who has low health, 
it's called sort of diving. And some characters are better at it than others. But obviously it has some risks and rewards. If you do it right, you can get off with a kill. If you mess up, <laughs> you'll end up dead. Okay, this is such an awkward engagement. I'm having some lag. Poor connection right there, it says. This is definitely, I'm definitely feeling it. I'm trying to walk that way. It's not going so well. What's going on? I'm going to use ultimate. What's, eh, abilities activate. Kill him. Kill him softly. How would I get low health? What happened there? I'm so confused. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Wow, that was a lot of damage. Jeez, that, that, was, that was some crazy lag. So, Tornado Trigger has Blazing Salvo and Lucky Strike that builds up to it. So, it'll be cheaper the more you have. Tension Bow, so you 600 because I have 6 sins and Piercing Spear. As soon as I buy it, it'll go up to its full price. That's why it's recommended to buy the two tiers under it until you can afford the max tier. Oh god, don't give him the ace. Well, you wouldn't need. <laughs> that was so dumb. They had some of their team in, so if you got the kill, it wouldn't be an ace. But if they got the kill, it would be. Anyway, oh gosh, the lag though. <laughs> I'm doing absolutely horrible. Six and eight. I don't care, it's not the point. The point is not to do good right now. Just to tell you as much as a possible can about the Vainglories. So, once you're... Okay, see? I couldn't see them. Oh, gosh. So I left the brush. Put some damage on them. I... Not worth it. <laughs> whoa, 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 you, what, it did damage, nope, I'm out, so using that ability, when I'm in the bush, I can't be seen, you kind of saw that pillar of light going up through the bush, the enemy cannot see that though, so it's okay, so there are four categories, five categories, really, I mean, other than the recommended, you have weapon, so these, these will increase your basic attacks, your auto attacks, you have ability, which will increase the three, Three things at the bottom, make them do more damage, or whatever it says. Shatter glass will just straight up increase um, the damage. But this one does. Okay, wait. <laughs> Getting distracted. Okay. So like I was saying, um, clockwork cooldown reduction. So it means I can use my abilities more often. And more energy, so the max amount of energy that I can have is also higher. If I were to buy clockwork. Okay, well, I'm taking some random damage. Doing some damage with my ultimate. Um, <laughs> getting a crap ton of lag. This is getting a bit annoying. I'll be very impressed if I win this. I might end it early after I finish talking. <laughs> <laughs> that lag is ridiculously annoying. Um, <laughs> you okay, Scarf? Oh no, stunned it. I'm out. Oh, that coach can't get in the way though. That's one for one so far. Celeste is gonna get away because Glaive doesn't know how to use his first ability for some reason. And he's going to die because he's very, very bad. <laughs> nah, he's gonna—he's not gonna die, but he just did not play that right at all. What is he doing? They're gonna give him the A's after absolutely dominating. Oh, we dominated that team fight, and the glaive just gave Celeste all his health back. Scarf didn't help at all, other than the ult at the beginning, and. She's dead, gave them the ace. My team is junk. <laughs> Jeez. Um, I'm gonna be able to crucible that I eat this. Okay. So, 
at 15 minutes, the gold mine, which accumulates gold, is replaced. No, what? <laughs> oh my god. That was so... I don't even know what happened. So, I was trying to go in there and get the last hit on the Kraken. If I got the last hit on the Kraken, then the Kraken would be ours. Despite them doing 99% of the damage. Didn't work out. I was a little careless there and did, forgot about the Koshka. Who kind of destroyed me. Um... They're attacking turret, they're turret diving, they're stunning us. They're kind of wrecking us right now, but I don't care because that doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyways, Kraken charges through, ignores all enemy heroes, all minions, only goes in, attacks turret, attacks all the turrets, and then goes for the crystal. The crystal cannot be damaged until all allied or enemy turrets are destroyed. So if, if I'm attacking... Oh, crap. Okay, they're attacking, so they have to kill uh, all of our turrets. Oh, crap. Before they can proceed to uh, kill our crystal. I don't know why my allies are trying to fight the enemy. They've proven that they're junk at team fighting. I don't know why they don't just kill Kraken. <laughs> Yes, cracking down. Vox down. <laughs> so now all we have left is our crystal. So it's vulnerable for them to pretty much walk in there and kill it. <laughs> now, my team and me, we are the only things left to defend the crystal from them. So, I'm going to talk about mini mines right now, because I guess I have time. So, okay. That, that, that's a minion mine. Spawns in, four minutes in, with the gold mine. What it does, is it makes your lane minions stronger. Makes them bigger, stronger, do more damage, have more health, everything. But, right there, 46, 46... 46, 96, they give, oh crap, they give a lot more money to uh, the enemy team, the more uh, minion mines you hold, the more, uh, the stronger they'll be, and the more experience they will give, experience and gold, jeez, so the more minions mines you have, the more experience and the more gold. We'll give so per minion. It's like okay, let me kill that min. I get forty six. This min will give me ninety four. <laughs> okay, see that that's what I was doing there is called targeting. I focused the enemy hero who has who does the most damage as opposed to Arden. Who simply has the most health. Crap, turret's attacking me. I'm getting out of here. Okay, we killed the enemy turret. Okay, we're pushing back. I'm gonna teleport home, not only to regenerate my health, but also to defend Crystal, which they could walk up, sneak through the jungle, and kill at any time. Minion mine captured. So we now have another min minion mine. We have both right now. So our minions will be super strong. We'll walk through and hopefully kill turrets and get to the crystal, their crystal while we'd have found ours. Okay, so I'm basically telling my team to go to the lane, go through their base, win it for the team. I'll stay back here and defend. We have right there, go, avoid. On my way, group up, and question mark. You can click on any of them, and then click somewhere on the map. For example, like that. Wherever you put your finger on the map, you can move your finger around the map. 
to see what's going on there. Right there. The enemy heroes are right around there. But unless they're... If they're not in the vision of our heroes or a turret or something like that, then I won't be able to see them. So if they were standing right there on that center area, I would not be able to see them. For example, the Vox, just if you see, they're disappearing because they are no longer in the vision of my team. Okay, it looks like my team's gonna rally up for a team fight. Flex the block through that. That was nice. Ooh, killing them. Killing the game. Okay, that doesn't matter. We're gonna take crack <laughs> and maybe win the game. I'm gonna be very, very surprised. So, the Kraken, we have killed two of their team, or two of their members, and we're all three up. So, we are attacking the Kraken. And, okay, well, yeah, so we've, we've taken, killed Kraken. So, right there, I bought Journey Boots because my build is maxed out. It no longer matters. Okay. So, we now have Kraken. The Kraken will push through. You're going to guard, um, like this, I'm going to guard the base, their base, make sure none of them sneak out, Koshku's sneaking out. Okay, easy kill. For inventing them, I don't know where the Celeste is, if I see anything bad, I'm going, okay, she's right there. So if I see anything bad, if there are any of them are missing. I'm going to go ahead and head right back to our base to defend it. Looks like she may have. If I don't see her in three seconds. Okay, she's definitely at our base, but we will kill it first. Wow, that was such a great comeback. GG, GG. So that's game. We were able to clutch an amazing comeback. I went positive at the end there. I, I was <laughs> so at the end. You can thumbs up people, friend them, or I probably should have shown. You can hit thumbs down and then choose unpleasant behavior, low skill, or abandoning. If they did any of those, so from here you can look. You can see their KD ratio, their KDA ratio, kill death assist ratio. Um, our glaive. I had four kills. Three deaths and nine assists. Killed 55 minions, that's what that is. And got $7,000. Scarf had five, three kills, five deaths, nine assists. Killed 66 minions. Had 7,900 gold. I got 13 kills, 10 deaths, six assists. I didn't care too much. <laughs> that's why I died so much. I'm not bad, I promise. <laughs> I got 10,000 gold, the most on the team, and 82 minions, obviously, again, most on the team. Their team was the Koshka. Had uh, 6 kills, 11 deaths, 6 assists, 58 minion kills. I don't basically see the rest. The Celeste had quite a bit of money as well. Just like me, I can give them all a thumbs up because it was a very great match. Very great match. Um... Their Celeste was very good, but I figured out that you target the Celeste and she can't do anything because she have, has no health. I built Weapon Power Vox because I felt like it. You can click on the items afterwards to see what they do. Um, in details, you can see separate things. These builds and then a lot of other stuff over here. Um, I'm going to screenshot that. Because that was a pretty good comeback. <laughs> a great comeback, to be honest. We were pretty much getting dominated throughout the entire ma match. Mainly because I was being careless. But then I kind of tried at the end there. And uh, things went our way. <laughs> um, anyways. Um, I hope you learned something. It was kind of a long match, actually. But I was able to allow me to...
talk about a lot. 30 minutes and 50 seconds in. Overall, 20 to 18. Um, I could individually talk about all these items, but I'm going to do that in a different episode. Anyways, thanks for watching, and see you guys later.